the children of America have really um, had a great uh, loving relationship with President Abraham Lincoln. And that's been evident over the years in uh, penny drives uh, to raise funds for organizations such as ours, as well as other organizations all throughout the country. Um, and in fact, children were very important to Abraham Lincoln as well. Not only his own children, but children of America. Everybody knows the story of 11-year-old Grace Bedell of Westfield, New York, who in a letter on October 15, 1860, suggested to Abraham Lincoln that he grow whiskers because the beard would make him look more handsome and more distinctive. And of course, Abraham Lincoln took that young lady's advice to heart and grew a beard. In fact, she said something to the effect of, um, I can assure you that I will convince my brothers to vote for you if you grow that beard. <laughs> And um, on February 16th of 1861, on Abraham Lincoln's train trip to his inaugural in Washington, D.C., he stopped in uh, Westfield, New York, and actually had an opportunity to meet with the young 11-year-old Grace Bedell, and actually had an opportunity to thank her for the suggestion of growing his beard. And that was uh, just three days prior to Abraham Lincoln's stop here in Peekskill on February 19th of 1861 during that same train journey. <clears throat> so why does that all have to do with Abraham Lincoln and our guest speaker tonight? Well, a good friend of mine uh, who's also a Lincoln scholar and researcher, a fellow by the name of Richard, uh, Richard Schwartz, um, he's another historian, another lecturer, he uh, told me at one of our Rock and Civil War meetings the other day that some amazing young American children have done some phenomenal research recently on Abraham Lincoln and in fact have uncovered some very uh, rare and unknown facts concerning the president and I would like to just read a couple of them to you and this is all recently uncovered research by some of America's uh, smartest and brightest children. Nine-year-old Patty of Furniture of Sarasota, Florida <laughs> said that Abraham Lincoln became America's greatest president and that Lincoln's mother died in infancy and he was born in a log cabin which he built with his own hands. <laughs> Six-year-old Izzy For Real of Cleveland, Ohio <laughs> discovered that when Lincoln was president, he wore only a tall silk hat. <laughs> Eight-year-old Nick O'Time discovered that Lincoln said, in onion there is strength, and that Abraham Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg Address while traveling from Washington to Gettysburg on the back of an envelope. <laughs> So as you can see, the future of America is very bright with researchers like this. Just in case, nine-year-old from Kearney, New Jersey, discovered that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves by signing the Emasculation Proclamation, <laughs> and that the 14th Amendment gave the ex-Negroes citizenship. Seven-year-old Shirley, you must be joking, said that on the night of April 14, 1865, Lincoln went to the theater and got shot in the seat by one of the actors in a moving picture show. The believed assassinator was John Wilkes Booth, a supposedly insane actor. This ruined Booth's career. <laughs> So I hope that this introduction here doesn't ruin my career. Because <laughs> one of the um, honors of working with the great people at the Lincoln Society and being on the board of directors with such wonderful people who hold our 16th president in such high esteem, as does everyone in this room who, who participates uh, both in the morning festivities at the Lincoln Depot and at our annual dinner dance, one of the uh, honors is the privilege of um, 
securing the keynote speakers uh, for our evening. Um, and that has granted me certainly the opportunity to meet some wonderful people, some really uh, great historians, um, some of the best and the brightest uh, of our country, the children of America notwithstanding. Um, and as historians um, and, and Lincoln scholars, um, Philip B. Coonhart III certainly falls into that category and meets the criteria of being a, uh, a fantastic um, and wonderful Lincoln scholar. And the thing that I appreciate the most about meeting some of these people, to a person like myself who goes to Civil War reenactments and is very involved in the Civil War and the history of our country, um, people like Philip Coonhart and certainly Harold Holzer, who was our speaker last year, these men are looked up with, with high esteem by people like myself. They're almost like rock stars among the historical community. So it's always wonderful when I reach out to them, when I get an opportunity to meet them, to find out that they're really nice, normal, down-to-earth, everyday people. They're friendly, they're gregarious, uh, they'll share a joke with you, they'll laugh, they'll take the time to uh, share their knowledge with you, and it's really heartwarming and wonderful to find that out. And of course, uh, Mr. Coonhart fits that bill to the T as well. So without any further ado, I'd like to just do a brief biographical introduction for Mr. Coonhart, because he is indeed one of the premier Lincoln scholars in our country working at this time. He has spent the past 20 years exploring the lives and accomplishments of pivotal figures from American history. As an author and a producer for PBS and other networks, he has helped create, create stirring historical documentaries and written companion books to accompany them. In the process, he has interviewed many of America's greatest historians and intellectuals, prepared interviews for all of the living presidents, and directed the voices of many of our leading actors and actresses. He is recognized as an authority on Abraham Lincoln and on the visual record of his life and times. He is co-founder of the Missouri Coonhart Foundation, whose massive collection of photographs from the 19th and 20th centuries has been deemed an American treasure by the National Park Service and the National Trust for Historic Preservation. A gifted and inspiring public speaker, Coonhart uses pictures and words to bring history alive and to show why it matters today. Coonhart has co-authored two books on Abraham Lincoln, a best-selling biography and an extensive look at his legacy, and in the Lincoln Bicentennial year, he is currently working on a third, and two of those books are available for sale here uh, by our author this evening. <coughs> As a historian who does a lot of research, his research has traversed him far beyond just Abraham Lincoln. He has written books on P.T. Barnum, America's Greatest Showman, other American presidents, um, and several other books and PBS specials based on uh, other presidents and other important American figures like the Kennedy Tapes Revealed, uh, an NBC Bravo special in 2004, and uh, he was uh, a developing producer for The Search for Eternal Egypt on the History Channel in 2005, so you can see that his scope as a historian goes far beyond just Abraham Lincoln. Over the years, he has spoken uh, among many locations at the Smithsonian Institution, the White House, 92nd Street Y, the University uh, of New York Historical Society, and the Miller Center at the University of Virginia. He has appeared on the Today Show, the Charlie Rose Show, National Public Radio, CNN, Larry King Live, and the Diane Rehm Show, amongst so many others. He is currently a Bard Center Fellow in Annandale, New York, where he is teaching on Lincoln in American memory and on the life of times of Frederick Douglass. So I'd like to give, please, a very warm Lincoln Society and peaceful welcome to Mr. Philip B. Coonhard III. <laughs> 